Hey guys, we are going to look at direct variation relationships. I want you to go ahead and write proportional at the top of the paper along with direct variation because direct variation is just another name for a proportional relationship. So we are going to answer the question, how do I solve problems and write questions involving direct variation? So direct variation is just a special type of linear equation or slope intercept form equation where it's just y equals kx. We don't have that plus b, and because we don't have that plus b, k is a special type of slope where slope formula works, but so does just doing y divided by x. Instead of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, you can just do y divided by x. So I think I just summed up everything that's over here. Direct variation relationships have a constant ratio of y divided by x between all the x and y values. Y equals kx is the form of a direct variation equation where k is the constant multiplier. k is also known as the constant of variation, which is just a fancy slope since you can do the y divided by x. Direct variation relationships are also referred to as proportional relationships because it has that constant y divided by x. K is the special type of slope where the slope formula works as well as just doing y divided by x. So one of the things that we are going to do is determine if it is representing direct variation or proportional relationships. So if we have an equation, it has to be in the form y equals kx to be direct variation. In a table, they have to have that constant ratio or constant multiplier. And a way you can test it is by setting up a proportion and see if it works. Is that constant ratio of y divided by x there? Since there's no b, no y-intercept, if it's a direct variation graph, it has to be a line and it has to go through the origin. And then for word problems, if it's direct variation, we'll be able to set up a proportion. So let's answer a few questions about direct variation. One says, is it direct variation? If so, identify K. So yes, this is direct variation because it's in the form Y equals KX. There's no B. So they want us to identify k. k is just the coefficient of x, which would be 1 over 8 here. OK, number two, is this equation direct variation? That would be no, because we have a b. which means that it is not in the form y equals kx. All right, number three, we have a table and they want us to see if it is direct variation and if it is, we will identify k and the direct variation equation. So the way that we're going to test this out, if it is direct variation, then y over x will be the same throughout the table. So four over one is four. If I test this ordered pair, six over two is three. So right away, because the y over x is not constant, I can see that this is not direct variation. So this is no, because there was not a constant ratio. Number four, we have another table. So let's see if this one is direct variation. So if I do y over x, it should be the same thing the whole time. So 0 0.5 over 1 is 0.5. 1 over 2 is also 0.5. 1.5 over 3 would also be 0.5. And 2 over 4 would also be 0.5. So this one is direct variation because there is that constant ratio 
of y over x. And they wanted us to identify k. It would be 1 half here. So then our equation would be y equals 1 half x. Okay, number five, is it direct variation? If so, identify k and the direct variation equation. So for it to be direct variation, it has to be a line, which it is. And it has to go through the origin which this line does. So this is yes, direct variation since it's a line and it goes through the origin. And now K is just the slope. So the slope here would be up two over one. So the slope is two. So that means our equation would be Y equals two X. Okay, is this direct variation? Well, it is a line, but it does not go through the origin. So this one is no, it is not direct variation. All right, number seven says the value of y varies directly with x. That just means that it is proportional. If x equals three, then y equals 21. What is the value of x when y equals 105? So we can set up a proportion since they told us that this was direct variation. And we know that that constant of y over x happens throughout the direct variation equation. So this is how we'll set up our proportion. So the first ratio will be 21 over three equals, and then y is 105, and they're wanting us to find x. So now we're going to cross multiply to solve this. 21 times x is 21x, and then three times 105 would be 315. And then the last thing we would have to do is divide by 21, and 315 divided by 21 is 15. All right, number eight, the number of words that Madden can type varies directly. So that means we can set up a proportion with time in minutes. If Madden can type 225 words in three minutes, then how many words can he type in seven minutes? So there are several different ways to solve this. Um, I know that I can set up a proportion since it says varies directly. So that's what I'm going to do. There's also a lot of different ways to set up your proportion. Just make sure that you define it so that you're cons you are staying consistent. So I'm going to put words in the numerator of my ratio and then the minutes in the denominator. So the first information that they give us is that he can write 225 words in three minutes. So I'm gonna set that up as 225 over three equals, then it says how many words. So in my next ratio, I don't know how many words there are. So I'll put X. Can he type in seven minutes? And now I have my proportion set up so I can cross and multiply and solve. 225 times seven is 1,575. And then three times X is three X. And then we would divide by three and 1,575 divided by three is 525. So he could type 525 words in three minutes. All right, last one, it says the total distance in centimeters a toy car moves varies directly. So that means I can set up a proportion with time in seconds. The toy car moves a total distance of 204 centimeters in 12 seconds. What is the time in seconds the toy car moves when the total distance is 306 centimeters? So just make sure you define your proportion. I'm gonna do centimeters over seconds here. So let me write my first ratio. It can go 204 centimeters in 12 seconds. 
So 204 in 12 seconds. And then I want to figure out the time that he can go. So that'll be in the denominator. I don't know how many seconds he can go in 306 centimeters. And now I just need to cross multiply to figure out that missing time. So 12 times 306 is 3,672. And it'll equal 204 times X, which is 204 X. And then we divide by 204. And that is 18. So it would take 18 seconds for it to travel 306 centimeters.